three, two. Good hey, afternoon. Talk. Hello and welcome to the Omni Coalition new show, a.k.a. Talkness. This show is an amalgam of strange, weird, bizarre, off the wall, and unusual to uh, topics that. Uh, hold on a second. What, what just happened? Uh, failed to connect to the streaming server. Um, okay, well, uh, we're just recording this, I guess, then. Um, yeah, so this show is an amalgam of strange, weird, bizarre, off the wall, and other otherwise things you don't normally see anymore from most news sources these days. During a time of political overabundance and divisiveness, we present you with more unifying topics to discuss for the most part. For links to those articles, uh, or to these articles we're going to be discussing, as well as music and anything else potentially interesting, check the under the description below, which includes, you know, our, um, our link tree. So, yeah, go uh, check that out. Uh, anyway, I am Alexander, and who am I joined by today? The Rumbuser. Loki Lycan. And we have Tittles in the live studio audience. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, and, of course, you, viewer, are you. Today is uh, Tears' Day, a.k.a. Tuesday, uh, July 11th, 2023. It is 7-11 day. Uh, go and get your free, like, thimble-sized cup of a Slurpee. Just, that's it. You know, there's your free Slurpee. And, you know, go and stand in line for an hour and a half in the heat, you know, for that. You know, good job. Oh. You know, yeah. Uh, weird. They do it different here. Yeah, no. Like, they literally have, like, these, like, it, it's it's literally, like, like you know, small, very, like, boop, like, they just, like, that's it. Like. Oh, here, you can bring your own cup. Oh, no, no, they got rid of that, like, seven years ago. Like, a long time ago. Because people were coming in with fucking wheelbarrows, like, literally, coming in with, like, wheelbarrows yeah. and, like, you know, industrial barrels and, and yeah, like. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. They specifically said here in Canada you have to bring an actual cup, not a fucking uh, gallon barrel or something. Oh well, no! I mean, like they have yeah, also like it the has big to be uh, actual. Well, they have like the big yeah, gold here, things too. Like there's like you can carry a whole. They have gallon glasses, you know, for the fatties. So. Yeah, yeah. No, like here in Canada, it has to be. Um, Pass provided by 7-Eleven. So uh, any of their promotional mugs. So they've gotten rid of uh, the rule where you can bring whatever mug you want. It has to be something that you bought from that. Well, speaking of Canadians, we've just been joined by... Uh, the Golden Moon. Welcome to the show. You oh, are home you. early. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think I've ever been on the new show. You have been a while, a while ago. Did uh, I? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, speaking of news, let's get into these notable events, weather, and sports here. Uh, who wants to read the headline? Oh, I better bring that up so I can see them. That would be beneficial. So, yes. <clears throat> yes, it would. We change the quality to 720p there. So, I don't know. Does Rombuster want to take this one, or should I? Up to you guys. Somebody take it, though. I don't Okay, Japanese farmers develop sweet and sour lemon melon. Huh, and I just realized that uh, we're out of order, but let's, let's read this first and foremost. So oh, God. The, the lemon melon is a newly developed type of melon that apparently combines the sweetness and aroma of the melon with a slight sourness reminiscent of a lemon. Japanese horticulture company uh, Sundry Flowers reportedly sent, or spent five years developing the lemon melon, breeding it from a type of melon originally imported from overseas. The process involved a lot of trial and error and took about five years, as said before. Uh, during the development period, orniculturalists experimented extensively with a number of factors, including cultivation methods and harvest times. The final product, which is apparently be, uh, blended with actual lemons, is juicy and sweet like a melon, but slightly sour like a lemon, uh, making it the perfect fruit to enjoy on a hot summer day. Well, I'll be damned. Leave it to the Japanese. Yeah, you so know? that means maybe less sugar and lemonade? Huh. Well, now are we going to start calling it yeah, melon? Yeah, it. <laughs> like, I mean, like, we uh, already have cucumber I lemonade. I want one now. Uh, yeah. Well, like, I've been wanting to try a square watermelon. Have you seen those? No, the, I The cube watermelons? Yeah, let me... Yeah, like, it's specifically... Because like, uh, they grow them in these cages, and the end product is a cube, so square oh, okay. watermelon. But why is... Okay, come on. Why is my internet... My internet's just dead now? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's weird. My internet is just, like, it's not loading. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, that's weird. That's odd. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, because my internet crashed a little bit ago for my phone. 
Square watermelon. Okay, well, it's, it's just not loading Google. What the hell? Is Google down? Um... You know what? That would that would make sense. Maybe Google itself is down because uh, our stream earlier, we're not live streaming right now, we're recording. I think Google is down. Hold on a second. Go back to your format. Is it still there? Uh, well, no, like we're not live. We're recording. Yeah, I got so, that. I mean, the format for the news. Uh, format for the news. Yeah, no, all the, all the stuff is oh, still is here. It's still there. Okay. Yeah, no, like that's the format. Uh, let me try Yahoo! Here, well, Yahoo's down. <coughs> Well, Yahoo's owned by Google. Um, okay. Uh, YouTube. Uh, cannot connect to the internet. It says I'm not connected to the internet, but I'm talking to you guys through the internet, right? Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me check something. What the hell is happening? Chrome right now. I'll check it myself. Yeah. This is weird. Like, have I been like... I think it's... Have I been shadow banned from the internet? Like, at least a browser? Oh. Seems almost likely, because I can connect to Google just fine. I'm on the uh, YouTube. YouTube right now. Yeah, Google's just not loading. Dude, like, I think we've seriously... Because, like, we had a problem earlier, uh, like, with the history show earlier today. Yeah. The internet just died. Like, after we were talking about some touchy subjects uh. you know and this is not the first time like this is happening almost on a daily basis whenever we talk about anything modern day anything happening you know t you know right now then all of a sudden the internet just crashes like somebody's watching us somebody's watching me like uh. this is wild but you weren't talking anything crazy here we're talking about lemonade well yeah but like i think they're just like they're just shutting me away like they're not going to let me connect like on like this is what I'm saying like the ISPs like well anyway um, we still have these up here so uh, I can't find the cube watermelons for you right now but uh, okay. let's move on up here what else do we have a shopping um, mall high tech urinals provide urine tests <laughs> for a fee <laughs> what oh no. god. Chinese netizens have been reporting the presence of high-tech urinals capable of conducting quick urine sample tests at shopping malls, scenic spots, and other busy urban areas. Photos of a strange-looking urinal at a mall somewhere in Beijing's business district have been doing the rounds online and sparking heated debates. Apparently, it features a digital display complete with a built-in payment processing unit that allows uh, users to have their urine tested after relieving themselves. The urinal presumably has hidden sensors that analyze the urine for a bunch of markers, including calcium, glucose, protein, ketone bodies, uh, ascarbates, and others. The information displayed on the screen suggests that the developer has obtained some patients uh, or some patents for the urine testing technology, but the accuracy of the results is a matter of contention. And on top of that, now some random guy out there knows what is in your urine. Yeah, like that's where's, some. Where's that going? You know? Like. <laughs> Not down you the drain. To, you talk to Chinese, you know. Whoa. Can, yeah. Go to the military, go It anywhere. looks like you have to aim at the thing. <laughs> well, that's the point of a urinal. How good you shot? Actually, no. No, I, I funny story. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. Funny story. You at the red dot. <laughs> no, no, no. No, you can actually look this up. I, I can't for whatever reason. Like, let me test out Google again. Let's see if they're working. Nope. Okay. Uh, so apparently I'm locked out of Google. Um, and the internet uh, for some reason um, but uh, no like there is a test where uh, they had uh, you know men you know urinate into another into it like a just you know normal urinals yeah. and then they had other urinals with like a fly painted there and they noticed that like most men aimed at the fly <laughs> oh I've seen that yeah uh, yeah and so that's why urinals are designed that way. That's where the fly would be, and that provide that specific area is like the least splashback. So, if you piss on the fly, then you know you're you're urinating as cleanly as possible into a urinal. Like I don't know what else to say about that. Well, I did miss the fly once, but I hit my shoe. <laughs> that sounds like a skill issue right there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's move on up here. What else do we got? Oh my god. I think it's your turn, Loki. Uh, Indian man marries his cheating wife to his lo her lover? To her lover. 
So it sounds like he's like the pastor and he is marrying those two. Wow. So, uh, in what they are calling a real life Bollywood movie script, an Whoa. Indian man married his wife to her lover after catching them cheating. Wow. Uh, in the 1899 Bolly and 1999 Bollywood classic, uh, Hamdil D. Shuki Sanam, A.J. Devon's character, Varanj, uh, found out that his wife is in love with another man and decides to, uni to unite them. It is one of India's most famous love stories, and, you know, this sounds like uh, max maximum cuckery to me. Um, uh, and, what, and it was one that was recently replicated by a scorned husband who, upon learning about his wife's infidelity, arranged a union of the spouse uh, to her lover. The unusual incident took place in the Nardinajing, a village in India's Bihar state, after villagers caught a young man, uh, married woman, or caught, caught a young married woman visiting the home of her lover while her husband was away. They beat the man, who was also married with three children and had decided to drive the pair from their village, uh, but then the woman's husband returned and came up with another solution. Wow, so not only like... Wow, this is getting wild. Uh, apparently, the unnamed couple had been married for only a few days when the husband learned about his young bride's infidelity, and despite trying to talk her into giving up her lover, she never did. They uh, they had two children in the in three years. Uh, they had two children in the three years that they were married, but the woman's heart still belonged to her lover, uh, who was married and had kids of his own. So wow, what is happening? So he hung around so, for three years and then married her off. Yeah. And by the looks of it, it looks like they've been into several fights. Look at that shoulder. It's all bloody. Yeah. Oh, I think she got him. Uh, this is some wild stuff here. Huh. Got some pictures for you. Uh, I can't see them. They're not loading. Like, as I said, like, uh, I'm, I'm cut uh, off uh, somehow. Yeah. Oh, did you see the second photo? That dude got a black eye from her. Jesus. What the hell's wrong with that guy's arm? That's that's what happens when uh, you get into a fight with a female. They start scratching the shit out of you. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, anyway, what yeah. else do we have here? Let's move on up. I think it's Rhombuser's turn if he wants to. Doctors find a whole octopus stuck in man's something. <laughs> Yeah. What was he doing? Deep throating an octopus? Like, actually, he's trying to swallow it. Actually, no. Like it is a Korean uh, delicacy. To, like there are like like in not just Korean but in various parts of Asia. You know their food. Uh, using that term loosely, not to offend. Uh, but it is a delicacy. There is like this one little octopus or something that they just swallow whole alive. Like uh, it is horrifying. Dude. Like yeah. Uh, That's not safe. No. It's, it's not. A terrible, that's a terrible tradition. Especially with their demand. suckers. Yeah, no, it's actually, it was featured on, uh, it was featured on an episode of A Thousand Ways to Die. Uh, this one guy was, uh, it was like, uh, it was like a Japanese guy, uh, and his girlfriend was Korean. Uh, actually, no, no, it was a Korean guy, in, in, whatever. It was one Asian in a different type of Asian, and he was trying to impress his girlfriend's father, uh, who challenged him to, like, some, like, eat off or something. And uh, the father ended up choking to death uh, by trying to swallow an octopus hole, just like this. So, uh, but like you know, it, it happens. Like I don't know why people can't just eat normal food. You know, we don't live in you know poverty. You know, as we used to back in the day. You know, we actually have food. You know, like not made of mucus. So. But if anyway, just get like a hot dog. I know. Yeah. Something that'll actually like go down. I know. It says doctors in Singapore were shocked to discover an octopus lodged in a man's esophagus while performing a gastrointestinal examination to see what was causing him to vomit. Uh, the unnamed, uh, the unmanned, uh, the unnamed Singaporean man first realized something was wrong when he started vomiting following a meal that happened to include a raw octopus. Yeah. When he realized that he had also had trouble swallowing, the man panicked and quickly decided to pay a visit to Tan uh, Tok Sing Hospital Emergency Room. Doctors there, uh, doctors there quickly conducted a CT scan, which revealed a super dense mass in the man's esophagus, which is the food tube. Uh, but they could not be sure what it was without attempting an invasive procedure called, oh my god, uh, 
It looks like somebody literally just on the keyboard. Um, Isafa, look at this. Uh, Isafa gastroduonoscopy, which involves inserting a small flexible tube with a camera at its end down the person's throat. That's how they discovered that the man yeah, had a whole a octopus word. stuck in there. So, yeah, yikes. that's not a word. No, that's gross. I don't want to see that. <clears throat> like, if you have enough water, you can definitely get that thing down. You yeah. shouldn't be eating a live octopus, question mark, you know? Like... Yeah, no, the the thing is, like, that was stupid. Like, if you had a you big hunk of enough, steak, you know, like, in my situation, when I had a, a, like, a cool giant thing. chunk of steak stuck in my throat, no, the solution to that is chug water. Get a big old, get a big old liter of water and just slug it. <laughs> and it'll go down. Like, you'll feel it cool. <laughs> yeah. But if it doesn't, that water will come up and mount your nose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you can start drowning, you know? Like, but you gotta chug it, but you gotta chug it fast. It, it's the only way it'll work. I have a better solution. Just don't swallow a raw <laughs> octopus. Yeah. Like, like well, we don't even need to get to the water scale. problem. Like... Well, yeah, don't swallow an octopus. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody, everyone should know... Do your steak, <laughs> goddammit! Yeah. You should just be, uh... Oh. Don't inhale your steak. Chew it. Yeah, you got. Yeah. You have teeth for a reason. You're not a snake, you know. Yeah. Uh, chew your food. God damn it. Enjoy your food. <laughs> anyway, Loki. Uh, actually, whose turn is it? To uh, I think it's Loki's turn uh, now. Right? He just did the octopus. Okay. Man passes a hundred and thirty point five pound weight between his hands a hundred times. Oh, not this guy. Yeah, it's uh, it's Rush again. I I presume. Um, but he's not really passing yeah. it. He's more like, you know, just doing that. Off. Yeah, well, he, well, here's... One hand to the other hand, one hand to the other hand. Oh, what am I doing? I'm trying to play a video while I can't connect to YouTube, so I can't even... Um, I said, an Idaho man who has broken more than 250 Guinness World Records uh, is aiming to yeah. recapture one of his former titles by passing a 130.5 pound weight from one hand to another 100 times. David Rush! Previously held the recorded for heaviest yeah, weight transferred hand to hand 100 times by using weight 107 pound weight, but his record was broken by Erfren Mesud who used a 115 pound weight. Uh, so he and he has since uh, yeah, there's not much left to the article. So please, like as always, uh, give the foot traffic to these uh, to these sources. They put in the work. They make uh, they make these articles. We just read them to get you interested and send you on your way. So please check the underbar of the description for all uh, you know. All of these uh, articles and such, but yeah, David Rush, man, he's just—you uh, know—you can't hush the rush. I don't know. Like, I love how uh, we got the top of your head, Loon, like just kind of like over oh, yeah. here in the background. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you have to pay to get your. Uh, you do your uh, record. You do. You got to pay their expenses. You gotta you gotta pay their expenses, their their travel fee, their their hotel fee, their fee to like you know, like put you in the record, you know, their the time they spent there, you know, hourly way, whatever. You gotta pay them several thousand dollars just to come out there and watch you attempt. And then if you break it, you gotta pay more, I think, to actually put it in. So it's a business as everything yeah. is, you know? From hospitals to mortuaries, you know, birth to death, everything's a business. Um, including prisons, you know, which I was talking about earlier today. Um, but uh, anyway, what else do we got here? This is something I would have liked to uh, participate in. Ooh, and more than 17,000 pancakes served in eight hours to break a world record. Damn. Ooh, that's, a, that's a lot of pancakes. That is a that, lot of pancakes. That is a lot of pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Organizers of an annual rodeo and festival in Alberta, Canada, hey, look at that, announced they broke a Guinness World Record by serving more than 17,000 pancakes in eight hours. I wonder, though, if there's these, those little baby pancakes, you know, just to, like, know. you know. I don't know, still got to cook them and flip them. Yeah, but like. A lot of pancakes. The How many people are doing it, though? They don't say. Uh, well, it says here, the Calgary Stampede, an annual expedition, rodeo, and festival in Calgary, announced pancakes uh, started being served to volunteers at the GMC Stadium Courtyard at 6.30 in the morning on Sunday and started being served to the public when the doors opened at 8 in the morning. Uh, the event's official Twitter stated, uh, or Twitter account said a total of 17,182 pancakes were served by the end of the eight-hour period. Uh, girl, uh, Guinness World Records uh, agitator Brittany Dunn was on hand to observe the attempt. She ended up disqualifying 15 of the pancakes for various reasons, but that still left enough to break the previous record of 14,208. 
So, wow, you're going to sit there and nitpick, like, you know, oh, this pancake is not big enough for, well, like... Undercooked or something. Yeah. Else. Yeah. The Calgary I guess, Stampede is huge up there. Huh. It's a big annual deal. Yeah. Uh, they just stare at you. That's all they do. They don't, they don't get a say in what qualifies and what doesn't qualify. <laughs> and let's see here. Oh, we have uh, the next two articles actually are about this. There's some different sources. Oh. So go for it, Rom. Mermaids perform underwater music at Florida Festival. Uh, okay. It says, uh, Divers Dawn Mermaid Tales and ventured underwater with musical instruments for the 39th annual Lower Keys Underwater Music Festival at Lou Key Reef in Florida. The Florida Keys and Key West said in a Facebook post that the undersea concert featured the mermaid performers miming or miming with their instruments while real music was pumped into the area via underwater speakers by US One Radio. Okay, well, like, they're pretending to play. Yeah. So, but that's still pretty cool, you know? And I wish I could... Because realistically, you wouldn't be able to hear them instruments when they're playing it underwater. No. You wouldn't be able to hear them. No. They wouldn't be able to play. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, like... It, Sound travels differently underwater. Like they would be able to theoretically play, just that we wouldn't be able to hear it because we're underwater. It sounds, but like um, I saw a video a couple days ago about um, uh, every now and then, like if you're like you know like scuba diving or something, you know, just off the mm -hmm. off the coast, uh, there is a possibility that you can hear uh, a sonar ping, you know, from a oh, submarine or yeah. something. Now it's not like you know like it's it's most likely a training thing because the last thing. A submarine would want to do would be to give away its position with the ping so it's just yeah. more like training you know for for new people and stuff and all that jazz and yada yada but it is so loud it's reminiscent of uh a, a rocket you know being launched so uh -huh. if you're within like i don't know a thousand feet of a of a submarine and they 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 do the ping and you get hit it can liquefy your organs yeah. Yeah, but as far as playing music underwater, you know, you need the air for vibration to yeah. make the sound. So, oh, that is true. You know, oh. that ain't gonna work. That is true. That's why they pump the music in, I guess. But you know, water is one third oxygen. Yeah. You know, but it's gonna vibrate totally different. I mean, well, that's yeah, because it's density different. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, so again, we have this underwater music show in the Florida Keys promotes awareness of coral reef protection. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but then, uh, last but not least, um, Mr., uh, like, whose turn was it? Uh, Loki's, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this one, this one, uh, uh, I, I love, I'd love to read this entire one, so. Nevada license plate that's short for go back to California is provoked by DMV. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yes, right on Nevada. <laughs> Yeah. Go back to California. Yeah, funny. Yeah. Uh, a revoked Nevada license plate that was once meant to drive away Californians is getting one last chance to go back on the streets. The plate, which reads G O B K 2 C A, so go back to Cali, short for go back to California, was recalled by the State Department of Motor Vehicles in May after it received a complaint. Of course, it has to be a Karen. Uh, Dude, who's going to sit there and complain about that? Seriously. Oh, my God. California. They're telling me to go back to California. I can't believe it. All, we do, all we're doing is, like, taking all of our practices and bringing them over here we and destroying your state. What is the problem? Yikes. I never got that. People leave a state and go somewhere else and take all their crap with them. Well, it's not just that. Like, you, know, you look everywhere. I mean, like, like look at uh, all the people who've been coming up from Mexico. They come up here, and then they make little Mexico, and then, you know, they, they yeah. fly the Mexican flag. If I go to Mexico and flew the U.S. flag, they'd shoot me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, but anyway, um, it says here, uh, uh, now the vehicle owner is appealing the recall and will have a hearing on Wednesday, according to the Reno area news station. While well, only in this clown world... Will someone have to like go to court to stand up for yeah. you know this license plate? Really, you know, like a section of the Nevada Administrative Code uh, applied to the recall prohibits defamatory references to a person or group, but it's not. It's it's just go back to California. Nobody wants us. It's not a person or a group. It's a state. Yeah. That you're bagging on. Yeah. So like. I mean, like, unless you can consider a state a group, and it's not really a group, it's more of a landmass. Yeah, you it's, know? it's a geography. Yeah. So, no, they don't have uh, they don't have any ground to stand on. 
I mean, at, at least the people who are complaining about the license plate, that is. Yeah. So, um, oh, it says here, quote, in this case, the defame group is Californians, end quote. Oh, up yours. <laughs> DMV <laughs> spokesperson e Eli Roll told the Las Vegas Review Journal, uh, he added that the department regulatory turns down license plates that share the same message. Wow. And specials, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have a problem with go back to Texas. You know? Yeah. Like, you know? Because, because this is going, you know, this is telling blue people to go back to their blue places. If there's something telling red people to go back to red places, that, that would not be a problem at all, pretty sure. So. No, of course not, because it's the other narrative. <laughs> huh. The DMV reviewed more than 700 license plates from July 2022 to early March. Denied license plates includes the puzzling GGGGGGG, which I understand, uh, and the overly rude You Idiot, and many not so subtle allusions to profanity. So yeah, like I've seen a lot of those. Um, GG, good God. You know, no, just GGGGGG. Because uh, when when the police are, are you know uh, reporting a license plate or something, they they say it uh, the uh, the military alphabet like uh, uh, Alpha Bravo yeah. uh, Charlie Delta uh, A B C D E uh, Echo Foxtrot uh, Hotel. Um, you know, stuff like that. So they were just like, uh, like whatever G is, like, uh, like grape, 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 grape. I, you know, I don't know, like, um, and that would be very confusing, you know, to the dispatcher, like, you know. So, well, I've I've seen a I've seen a license plate that's a mixture of zeros and O's. Mm. That's confusing. So. Uh, but that'll be it. Uh, once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. For your dose of different, odd, and unusual, we stream every Tuesday and Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, which is 4 Mountain. Um, who, who here is in Central? Anyone here in Central? I don't think anybody here is in Central. Uh, 5 Central. And in, in what is it, Eastern? 6. Uh, there you go. All right. Yeah. For all of you and all of us, I am Xander. I am the Rumbusser. I am Loki. Golden Loon. And in live studio audience, Ooh. we have Tittles and Void, whoever that is. Uh, and of course, you viewer are you until you catch us on Friday, or if you're interested in some history, we have a history show every day at 11 in the morning Pacific time. Anyway, until you catch us next time, until then, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! Bye.